Hello, it is Thursday, April 7th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. Uh, I'm sorry this video is going up a bit late today. I apologize if you've been waiting for it. I've had a, a busy morning, so I'm finding some time to record it now. And it's a Thursday puzzle. I'm, I always kind of look forward to the Thursday puzzle. I know some people feel probably just the opposite, but I do like the unusual themes that tend to, uh, tend to be showcased on Thursday. Anyway, this edition of The Daily Solve has been brought to you by Dan Stoko, Quotidia File, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. So thank you so much to the three of them, benefactors of The Daily Solve Patreon campaign. And if you'd like to join their ranks as benefactors and get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve. But of course, if you back the Patreon campaign at any tier, you get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the feed to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. And you also get access to that extra channel on the Daily Solve Discord chat server. But the rest of the Daily Solve Discord chat server is free for anybody to join. And there is a link in the description field underneath the video, as well as a link to the Patreon campaign. So, um, But thank you to everybody who has backed the Patreon campaign at any level. I do very much appreciate that. It helps keep this whole thing uh, sustainable for me. So thank you. And let's move on to today's crossword. This has been constructed by Lucy Howard, only her second crossword for the New York Times, and Ross Trudeau, who I don't know how many he's done, but it's in the several dozens, for sure. And uh, Ross Trudeau is a uh, an experienced crossword constructor who does tend to uh, just habitually think very interesting and unusual crossword themes. So I'm looking forward to figuring out what he and Lucy Howard have um, have constructed today in that particular regard. And the crossword was edited, as always, by Will Shorts, of course. So let's get started. Thursday, April 7th, let's solve it. Beginner in lingo could be a noob, spelled N-O-O-B or N-E-W-B. Um, but let's see if let's see if the N and the B work uh, on their own. N-B, not a not a bene. Let's check the crosses. School with the Elmer Holmes Bobst Library. Um, I definitely don't know that. Uh, is it NYU, maybe? New York University? I have no idea. Oh, maybe it is. Words sung twice before A Pirate's Life for Me. Yo-ho, yo-ho, A Pirate's Life for Me. There we go. Uh, from, I think that was written for the Pirates of the Caribbean attraction at Disneyland. It, it's one of those songs that really sounds as though it um, would, has exist since, existed since time immemorial, but... Uh, but I do think it was actually created in the 60s for that attraction by, I think, Ex Atencio, Xavier Atencio, who also wrote Grim Grinning Ghosts for the Haunted Mansion attraction at Disneyland. They're both incredibly clever bits of music and lyric, I think. Okay, plunder. Oh, speaking of pirates, plunder could be booty. And organized workers could be uh, union members, union what's? Not sure, but let's check the crosses here. Seemingly forever, and the forever here, I think, draws attention to how long this period of time may be an eon, perhaps. So that suggests noob would be spelled N-E-W-B, and let's look at the cross there. Moonshine container? Eh, I don't know. White light or something? I'm trying to imagine. I mean, obviously, the first thought with moonshine would be uh, sort of bathtub gin or something like that, uh, illicitly created liquor, but uh, what am I missing? I'm not sure. What about this? Apt name for a warrior. <laughs> warrior stew. There we go. That's come up before, that sort of thing. Uh, you're stewing on your, I don't know, problems or potential problems. So what is this? Oh, whiskey, whiskey barrel? Is this a rebus maybe? Kind of lily... I don't know. Whiskey jug? Not really sure yet. What about this? Psst, alternative. Uh, nudge. So an alternative to sort of hissing for someone's attention would be to physically nudge them. And Roger that. Okie dokie or okie doke? Eh, that's not how I would have assumed this to be spelled. Let's check some crosses here. Photo blank, photo ops, photo opportunities maybe. And honor students' pride, for short, could be GPA, their grade point average, 
reflecting their high scores that have put them on the honor roll. It does look like it's going to be okie doke. That's I'm very surprised by that spelling. Well, maybe maybe I have whiskey wrong somehow. Let's let's keep looking around. Stuffed Jewish dish. Not sure off the top of my head. Let's come. I'm, I'm over here because I'm just very preoccupied by this okie doke. So, uh, Hindi for rain. I would have thought this would be Raj, as in the British Raj. No, sorry, there. So maybe it is whiskey jug. So if this were jug, oh, that would explain this. So then if we put a rebus in here, and again, I have to always, I always want to point this out because I always feel that every time there's a rebus in the puzzle, there's at least somebody who comments. He says, what on earth? Um, well, hmm, this looks strange though. <clears throat> maybe, well, okay, I think maybe it's not a rebus, but let's, just explain what I've done, just in case you aren't familiar and you're curious. A rebus has a meaning in puzzle solving that is distinct from this, but in the specific context of the New York Times crossword, a rebus refers to instances in which you enter several letters into a single cell as opposed to the customary one, and there's a little button for that here to put you in and out of rebus mode. Whoops. And it's up to the solver to determine when and how those will be entered. They're much more likely to occur on Thursday. I think it's extremely rare for them to occur outside of Thursday. Maybe Sunday as well would be the other day. I could imagine that happening, although Thursday would be the, the, the principal candidate. And I thought maybe it would be in here because Raj works with J, which could then allow us to spell whiskey jug, but we'd need more letters to do it. But now I'm wondering, because this A, there are two, sorry, this Y, this would re, this would repeat a Y in a strange way. So I'm wondering instead if maybe the key goes across here. So this key crosses the sort of whisk jug and creates whiskey jug. And I don't yet know exactly what that means uh, for the rest of the puzzle, but I think that's, the, and that that resolves the spelling of okie doke that I thought was sort of strange before. So this all, this looks right to me, okie doke and then whiskey jug spelled in this way. So let's see. Treasures bur buried in the hills would be ores, as in silver ore or something like that. And a customs too could be in your, oops, in yours too. You could say, I'm, in, I'm inured to the inconvenience. I'm accustomed to it. And the two in parentheses there, the parenthetical two means we're going to apply that both to the the clue and the answer. So not just accustomed, it's not that we're saying and yours means accustoms to, we're saying and yours to means accustoms to, if you follow my meaning. Here we have Bob Blank, co-creator of Batman, <laughs> Bob Kane, the co-creator of Batman, who I think fairly amusingly is still credited any out, seemingly anywhere Batman is ever used. Um, Bob Crane is, Bob Kane is credited. I'm not saying he shouldn't be, but uh, it is sort of funny because I think there was another co-creator maybe Bill Finger, if I remember correctly, who I don't think is, is, is credited. So there must have been some sort of contractual thing there. Anyway, kind of Lily, a Sego I've certainly heard of. And purchases for a high-tech hobby. I don't know, some kind of robot something maybe, but I don't think we have enough uh, other material to, to infer what's, what's going on there. So let's see, you should have kept that to yourself. The should have implies informality. So I'm wondering if that suggests this is something abbreviated or contracted, or in this case, maybe uh, initialized into TMI, too much information. Oh, so unionists, maybe organized workers. Okay. Uh, the uh, That word unionist has, um, I think, been overwritten in my brain <laughs> from living in the UK because it refers to a particular um, political uh, um, leaning, I suppose, with respect to the Union of Nations of the United Kingdom. So I don't, I tend to think of it in that way first. So my brain didn't go there. But anyway, that, that looks like it's probably the answer. And then what about this? Beaten via a referee's decision for short. Um, oh, TK, TKO'd maybe. So in boxing, a technical knockout, I suppose, is what this would refer to maybe. And then what about this pint size? I don't know, mini, I guess. Does that look right? Blank golf, disc golf, right? Which 
Is disc golf the same thing as ultimate frisbee? I don't really know. I think it might be. I'm not. I'm not actually sure. But disc golf is a phrase, so I think that works. And then how some ballet is prefer, performed on toe. Oops, there we go. And stuffed Jewish dish. Boy, I wish I were certain about this. Kishka? What about this? One driving kids to a rink say, oh, a hockey mom. Oh, and this is going to have another... Oh, no, it's not. This is just spelled normally. Sorry. So what about... What's this? Jordan Peele's production company named for a classic horror short story. Um, I happen to know this, actually. So, oh, and I, okay, yes, I see how this works. So Jordan Peele's production company, Jordan Peele, the director of Get Out and and one half of the, uh, I think, incredibly excellent comedy duo, Key and Peele, um, his production company, which uh, actually goes all the way back to Key and Peele, is called Monkey uh, Monkey's Paw. So, right, so we have Monkey... And we're spelling out key again. Oh, no, maybe it's not monkey's paw. Maybe it's just monkey paw. It must just be monkey paw. Okay, there we go. And this references the, um, as it says here, the classic horror short story, the, which I think might be called The Monkey's Paw or something like that, um, that refers to the, the the wishing upon a cursed monkey's paw and the, and the claw sort of curls. And then the, the wish is, is interpreted in a way that has uh, unintended disastrous consequences. Okay, menial position. Um, I'm not sure offhand. Where the terminal dash in Home Alone takes place. Oh, this is strange. This came up in the crossword just a day or two ago. Chicago O'Hare Airport. To be honest, I wouldn't have necessarily known or remembered that this would have taken place in Chicago, but I'm just... I'm assu- it says terminal dash, so I assume this means a terminal at an air at an airport. And starting with an O in five letters, I'm fairly certain the answer is going to be Chicago O'Hare. A big smile could be a beam, a be- big beaming smile. Uh, their name has the re of cream, <laughs> two O's from chocolate. Wow. Now this is a tortured clue, although I think in a knowing and tongue in cheek way. So I, as I've mentioned before, I think on this series, uh, some. You know, we have crossword ease. We have words that are used in the crossword dispro- considerably disproportionately relative to maybe their use in language more broadly. And one of the words that is legendary for its overuse in the crossword is Oreo or Oreos to the point that, from what I've heard anyway, apparently um, the New York Times mandates that whenever Oreo or Oreos is used as an answer in the crossword, the clue must be unique. It must be a clue that has not been used before. And so this, this really digs deep to find a way to clue Oreos that certain, I strongly suspect has never been used before. Their name has the R-E of cream and two O's from chocolate. So very good. And I think that is, I think that is a bit tongue in cheek. Mythical lion's home as Nemea, right? From, from, from Greek myth. And like some signals in traffic, it could be jammed. You could have a traffic jam or a jammed signal. A menial position. Oh, I see. Mick job. That's a, a sort of, I think, basically derogatory uh, slang term used to refer to a low-paid, uh, I suppose, usually sort of service job. Okay. Native of the great... So referring to McDonald's, obviously. Sorry. It probably goes without saying, but I didn't mention. Natives of the Great Plains would be the Cheyenne and um, that would be a tribe. And then here we have sticking points, could be apes. And now this has also come up, I think, yesterday or the day before. So both O'Hare and apes have come up just in the last day or two. So it just goes to show there are, there are some bits of crossroads. Although O'Hare doesn't come up so frequently that I would have necessarily considered that. Ape much more common because of its incredibly useful three E's, I guess. Certain high-fat, low-carb diet, informally, the keto diet... Uh, which uh, really stresses lots of meat and vegetables, basically little, f- few to no grains, I think. To put up with something is to stand it, to, ab- to abide it. And calculating, maybe sly, you, you, a sly person, calculating person looks right to me. I wonder if this will be a key. Fuel for a Mustang. No. Hey, maybe... <laughs> A uh, horsey tail. It would have been interesting if there was a tiny little key here to cross with something. Like planes and flags, they could be flown. F- uh, fly a plane, fly a flag. And peeps, so to speak, you could say fam, your, your people, your friends, your crew. Your peeps, your fam. 
solution to a bad hair day, maybe. Um, oh, a hat. There we go. I was thinking gel. I was thinking things like that. But no, simply a hat. You put a hat over it. Non-starters. Not sure I found. What about this? Oh, this is that possibly robot thing. What if we do put a B here? Non-starters. Oh, B team. Now that also came up this week, surely, didn't it? I think it was something like, yeah, I'm quite certain it did. So we have B team, Apes, and O'Hare all within the last, I think, two days. I can't remember if they were all on the same day or, or separated by a day, but certainly with certainly this week. Okay, anyway, lucky hit for a ping pong player. The edge of the table, I suppose. Uh, that makes sense. A very difficult shot to, to return. Age in a way could be grow. And it moves out to sea. You could have the tide ebbing, the ebb and flow of the tide. As it, as it ebbs, it moves back out to sea. Um, oh, maybe this doesn't grow because catch looks like nab to me. To catch, to catch a crook, for instance, to nab a crook. And what about this? 1981 video game that featured the first appearance of Mario. So uh, this is, yeah, this is actually Donkey Kong in which um, Mario was the protagonist, but the game was named for its... Uh, villain Donkey Kong. And so this looks like it's going to be another key, another cr sort of crossed keys, which is the crossed keys is the papal insignia, right? I wonder if that's going to have any relevance to the theme. I haven't seen anything uh, papal in character yet, so maybe not. But I just, I, as I was saying, I was sort of thinking of this as the key crossing the answer, and I just brought that to mind. Anyway, so we have Donkey Kong. Community served by Lambda Legal in brief. Uh, looks like LGBT. And then head slangily. Knob? Yeah, I think that might be right. And then biblical son of Seth, Enos? I think, yes. And the E of IE would be id est. Oops. Uh, so... That is so used as sort of a you know an explanatory abbreviation in a phrase. You could say "ie" and then and then explain you know give, give an example or further explanation of what you're talking about. Uh, blank one vodka brand is it Kettle One? I think it sounds right. I don't drink much vodka, but I think I think Kettle One is a vodka brand. Oh. Oh, oh, right. Okay. I was thinking this doesn't look right at all, but I think it is. Sound of a mouse pointer. So my, my first thought, because I didn't give proper attention to the question mark there, was I was thinking about a clicking sound or something like that. A mouse pointer. I don't know. I was thinking of a computer mouse, as, as probably most of us these days would. But the question mark indicates, don't think of this in the first... It's a pun or, a pun or a wordplay indicator. And so it's saying, don't think of this with its surface meaning. Think of this in a, in a different way. And in this case, I think it would mean someone pointing physically at a mouse, the animal, and maybe yelling, eek, a mouse, in the sort of classical cartoon sense. Bugaboos, well, it'll end with an S, and it'll be something that irritates you or bothers you. And then the stone, let's see if we can... She played Billie Jean King in 2017's Battle of the Sexes. Oh, that was Emma Stone, I'm pretty certain. And word with bad or smart... All bad, but all smart doesn't really work. Uh, oh, it could be badass or smartass, actually. That looks plausible. And then let's just... Francis Drake and Ernest Shackleton for two. So uh, we're explorers or navigators. Um, and then here we have blank creator omnium. I just wanted to make sure the S was plausible in both cases, which it looks like it is. Uh, creator Omnium. I'm not sure offhand. Ancient Hymn. Interesting. And then here we have Gangbusters. Well, Gangbusters is sometimes used to mean in great quantity. So you could say it's selling Gangbusters. It's selling in great quantity. But here it may refer specifically to people who break up organized crime rings. So maybe the feds. And then to federal agents in the United States. And then, could this be Deus Creator Omnium? That looks plausible. 
So what is this Francis Drake and Ernest Shackleton for two? What is, hmm. What if there are things named after these people? And perhaps that's what these are, rather than referring to the historical figures themselves. I'm not sure. Marissa of My Cousin Vinny, Marissa Tomei, I'm certain, and Soothing Sound. So that actually, that did that did at least not contradict Deus there. Um, let's keep looking around. What is this? Jailer. Oh, jailers or a hint to unlocking four answers in this puzzle. Oh, turn turnkeys. Okay, nothing to do with the <laughs> nothing to do with the Pope, which makes sense because you, if it were the papal insignia, you'd want there to be two keys crossing each other instead of just keys crossing something else. But anyway, um, jailers or a hint to unlocking four answers in this puzzle. Turnkeys. There we go. Very good. Oh, I see. Yes. So the key has literally been turned. We've we've turned the key from its vertical orientation, ninety degrees, to a horizontal orientation. Um, out of these clues. So that is that's a very good. Clever. Uh, this is, I think, very much a classic Ross Trudeau theme. It's incredibly neat and tidy, and and uh, the sort of pun and bit of bit of wordplay here matches what's been illustrated in the in the puzzle extremely cleanly. Okay, bugaboos. Uh, not sure. Go public with error. Maybe error grievance. Go public with a grievance. Successful study. I'm not sure. What about this? The heat on scoreboards. Oh, ah, actually, I might know this. Is it Miami? The Miami Heat? That really sounds familiar. That's a basketball team, I'm pretty sure. So, bugaboos. Oh, Banes. You could say that's my Bane. That's my bugaboo. I <laughs> sort of think of a Bane as being more grandiose and existential than a bugaboo, which I think of something as, although I suppose the thing they have in common is that a bugaboo isn't just something that bothers you. It's something that sort of constantly nags at you. It's a frequent annoyance. It's not just an incidental annoyance. And in, in that respect, I think it, it linguistically shares something with your bane, which is an, which is an ongoing uh, sort of antagonist, I guess. So anyway, successfully study, oh, to absorb, I see. So if you're studying a language, for instance, you could say, I successfully studied it. I absorbed it. That makes sense. And then here we have to age in a ways to gray, I see. And that's better than grow because age and grow are much more, they're much more synonymous with one another. Whereas here, this is saying age in a way. So it's not saying this is literally the same. Aging and graying are not actually the same thing because you could, um, you could age without graying. I mean, it, I mean, certainly one ages for a while, especially in one's younger years without graying at all. So the two things are not synonymous, but you could, in a way, you could say to gray, to age. So that, that, that's what that's, that's the work that the in a way is doing there. So just always look out for that. It'll keep you from getting too literally um, preoccupied. Soothing sound. Oh, I see. A murmur could be sort of soothing. Ah, Francis Drake and Ernest Shackleton for two sirs. So they were knighted. Each of them is, so we have Sir Francis Drake and Sir Ernest Shackleton. Okay. So the fact that they were both explorers is not actually what's relevant. That's in a way a sort of a bit of a red herring, I suppose. What's relevant is that they were both recognized um, for their achievement with a knighthood. Okay. And then to Vi to get, fight for, no, uh, compete for or battle for, I don't know. It could have a key in it as well, actually. So let's see, do, do the keys, are the keys, um, are they um, uh, symmetrical with one another? Sorry, I couldn't bring that word to mind. So here we had keys. So yes, this is, the, these, this is, so turn keys and okie doke. You can see they're they're disposed symmetrically in the grid. Actually, so here's um, there's a question somebody somebody asked. I, I know that we're not yet at the yesterday's clues bit, but this isn't a spoiler with respect to yesterday's puzzle. It was just something someone asked. Or it may not even have been yesterday. It might have been the day before. But in any case, somebody recently did ask in the comments about um, uh, symmetry. So. Uh, Shantanu Bhatia asked, regarding dimensions, are there any conventions or patterns to board symmetry or the placement of the black squares? And, and yes, I would say the basic convention is that black squares will be disposed symmetrically. And the most common form of symmetry, which is in the New York Times crossword, which is what is illustrated in today's puzzle, is rotational symmetry. So 
it's not it's not symmetrical either horizontally or vertically. In other words, if you folded this grid in half about a vertical or horizontal axis, it wouldn't the two halves wouldn't match up. But but it is rotationally symmetrical. So if you flipped this entire grid 180 degrees, uh, in other words, if you rotated it, not not flipped, but rotated it 180 degrees, the black squares would uh, remain in their identical positions. And so that's rotational symmetry. And that is, uh, and that's what we have here. And that is the most common form. And I think it's, I think it is probably the convention in the New York Times crossword that unless there's a good reason not to do it that way, your, your grid should be rotationally symmetrical. And reasons, reasons to avoid that are things like illustrating something in the grid, grid art, if, if, if that's related to the theme, or there are particular, um, you, you need answers to fit in the grid in such a way that you just can't reasonably construct a rotationally symmetrical grid that will allow for that. So you'll, you'll use one of the other forms of symmetry. And I think uh, vertical symmetry would be the next most common type. And then horizontal symmetry is, uh, well, sorry, I, I should I should be very precise when I say this, because so what I say when I say vertical symmetry, what I mean is if you folded the paper in half about a vertical axis. So it's actually the two halves side by side are identical. That's more common than the other way around. But anyway, that was just, a, sorry, I got a little bit digressed there more than I expected. So let's let's keep looking into this. My point was just that the key here is disposed symmetrically to the key down here, which leads me to suspect that the key up here will similarly be symmetrically disposed down here, which would make which would put it here. So let's see, does that work? Vi to get, yes, it does. Because you could say to jockey for position, to vi to get that position, to jockey for it, to vi to get it. So uh, so yes, that bit of symmetry did help us out. And that means going down here in this Thanksgiving answer, a uh, key will be in the middle. And Thanksgiving, the U.S. holiday uh, that um, centers around eating a big roast turkey, suggests to me that turkey will be part of it. So Thanksgiving turkey day. There we go. Okay, so we've fulfilled our, I think, what is probably our fourth and final turnkey answer. Anyway, let's let's finish off this puzzle. Gen Z, Generation Z style with emo and anime influences. Um, boy, I guess I'm aged out of instantly knowing what this is. Uh, let's keep looking. Imposter syndrome feeling. Doubt, self-doubt, I suppose. I'm not aged out of feeling, out of instantly knowing what that is, that's for sure. Uh, this looks like eBay, which is obviously not correct. Generation Z style with emo and anime influences. Um, boy, I just don't know. I'm sure I'm showing my my age or, or maybe just even more broadly my tendency to be out of touch with that one. Purchases for a high-tech hobby. So this does look like robot something, doesn't it? Robot kits. Oh, it is purchases. So it is plural. So right, perhaps robot kits. And raring to go. Formal decrees could be dicta. So the plural of a dictum could issue dicta decrees, formal decrees. And then actress Jada Pinkett Smith in the news recently, I guess. And then skirt could be to avoid, to avoid, oops, to avoid controversy, to skirt, skirt controversy, for example. Uh, blank on up, the Jefferson's theme, moving on up. Uh, uh, you could probably infer that even without necessarily knowing the um, the reference. And then raring to go could be, oh, you could be antsy. You could be, I'm really ready to go. I'm very antsy about this. Just like to go. To boil something down could be to decoct it. And prefix with sexual could be metrosexual. And then that will give us this answer that I'm very curious about. Gen Z style with emo and anime influences is e-boy. I have never heard of that. All right. Well, fair enough. It's a new one on me. So that's it. A very well, I think a very uh, well executed theme here with our four turnkey answers, including turnkeys itself, actually. So I didn't really, I didn't point this out at the time, but here, this is our revealers. This is the answer that explains what's going on with the theme and uh, and ties together the um, the answers that we've solved. Uh, well, sometimes the, sometimes we almost need the revealer to help us solve uh, the theme answers. In this case, I, I, I sort of arrived at how it worked beforehand, and then the, the revealer 
added a little pun on top with that turn keys. Um, and in this case, it's actually part of the theme. It's one of the theme answers, which is unusual. Usually the revealer is an entirely separate answer that explains what's going on with the theme answers. But in this case, it was a fully integrated part of the theme mechanic. So the turn, the word turn keys was itself part of the turn key mechanic. So we'll just review our four quickly. We had okie doke, which was a, a turn key for whiskey jug. We had hockey mom, which was a turn key for monkey paw. We had jockey four, which was a turn key, sorry, a, yeah, a turn key for uh, turkey day. And then Finally, we had turnkeys itself, a turnkey for Donkey Kong. Very good. Very, very nice, clever, clean themed puzzle. Really enjoyed that one. I hope you did as well. And uh, yeah, well done to Rostrado and Lucy Howard for constructing that one. And let's move on. I guess let's move on to those, those clues from yesterday, the ones that didn't include uh, asking about symmetry, which hopefully was hopefully was a useful answer. So let's see here. We have, um, well, some <laughs> some more people did point out that uh, for the for the second day running, there was a bit more uh, American specific cultural knowledge than than maybe there is in uh, typically. Um, anyway, let's see what do we have. So the Quad Cities, which was city. I, I wasn't familiar with the phrase quad cities, but a, as Brian points out, the quad cities are Davenport and Bettendorf in Iowa and Rock Island, Moline, and East Moline in Illinois, according to Wikipedia. Yes, that's five cities, but apparently the name stuck even after Bettendorf grew quite a bit. So quint cities never stuck. Fair enough. That sort of thing happens. And regarding Gail, who was the, the friend of Oprah uh, referenced in yesterday's crossword, Gail refers to Gail King, Oprah's longtime friend, who was a correspondent on her show and is now an editor-at-large for O, the Oprah magazine. So, thank you. Uh, Pee Wee Reese was a star shortstop for the Brooklyn Dodgers in the 40s and 50s. While being a 10-time All-Star, as well as being elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame, he is perhaps best remembered now for his open support of Jackie Robinson. It was a major deal at the time to have a star player voice his support for the first African-American player at a time when many players and fans were hostile to the idea. It's very good historical context. Thank you. Um, Kathleen Quinn explains that NEA, which I kept wondering, is that the National Endowment for the Arts? No, not in this case. It also stands for the National Education Association, the largest labor union in the United States, reportedly representing approximately 3 million educators. So good. Thank you. I'm glad to have had that little hole uh, in my knowledge filled in because I kept going back to that same well, didn't I? Um, oh, Bradley also had uh, explained um, about Pee Wee Reese and the Quad Cities. Sorry about that. So um, there we have it. And oh, we have a, a, a funny comment from Kathleen Quinn. So this is, <laughs> Kathleen Quinn wrote, anyone notice where the missing commas went today? This is of course referencing the the wordplay around commas in yesterday's puzzle. And I actually read Kathleen's comment before I solved yesterday's wordle. And so I wasn't really sure what she was referring to. And I think now, I think now what she's referring to is that comma was actually yesterday's wordle word. And that's not really a spoiler because you can't solve wordle um, after the day of its publication. So um, sorry if you've been spoiled, but too late uh, for you to, to uh, have been spoiled, I guess. So it was the word. It was yesterday's Wordle word. And I wish I would have kept that comment in mind and somehow made the leap to understanding what she was implying because it would have been extraordinary if I had used that inference to um, get Wordle in one. But I didn't. I think it took me five out of six guesses yesterday. So anyway, what can you do? But yes, it was a very funny and possibly intentional. I mean, I have to imagine it must have been, uh, must have been intentional that yesterday's crossword was themed around the comma and yesterday's wordle answer was comma. I hope it was intentional anyway. That's that. So yes, uh, quite a lot of digression on today's crossword, I suppose. I hope that's all right. I'll be back tomorrow for the Friday crossword, our first of two unthemed puzzles for the week. I hope you'll join me for that. And please do subscribe to the channel if you've not yet done so. I appreciate everybody who has. We're, we're actually, I think it, it took us absolutely ages to get up to um, 5,000 
viewers, but we're now more than halfway to 6,000 from that. So that's incredibly exciting. We're moving along more quickly. So thank you to everybody who has subscribed. Anyway, like I said, I'll be back tomorrow for the Themeless Friday puzzle. I hope you'll join me. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care.